<laughs> Freddie, I know you love Edgar Wright. Uh, so we've got Scott Pilgrim. We've got the Cornetto trilogy. Can you just remind me and the audience exactly what the Cornetto trilogy is? A series of three films in the 2000s to start of the 2010s. Simon Pegg, Edgar Wright, Nick Frost. Unbelievable trilogy. set of movies. Unbelievable. And, and, and all of which held very, well, held very dear to you. And Edgar Wright's Scott Pilgrim also held very dear to you. Mm. So I put it to you, Fred. I want to know where they sit amongst each other for you. What's yeah. number four? What's the worst of the four? There is a... F- I think four is the easiest position. I'm going to tell you what it is. I think you'll know, yeah. Go on. At World's End. Yeah, yeah. At World's End is <laughs> the worst. Deservedly bottom. Which is the only one I saw at the cinema when it came out. So maybe the one that I laughed at the most first um, upon first viewing. Because, you know, when you're in, in an environment around people, you kind of get... You know? And there was a. I can think of one amazing line. Uh, I haven't had a drink in 15 years. Oh, well, you must be thirsty then. Nice. I absolutely cracked up at that. <laughs> I never forgot that line. There's one. The, the funny thing about that one is Simon Pegg is the comic, he's the comedic character, and Nick Frost is the foil. Whereas in the others, Nick Frost is. Do you think that works less more. well? A tiny bit less well. I think yeah. Nick Frost is naturally a bit funnier and Simon Pegg plays a slightly better straight man. Yes, which uh, Mission Impossible is a very similar straight man-y sort of role. Have you watched any of those newer ones with Simon Pegg? Yeah, but he is like the comedic value in Mission Impossible, True. isn't he? No, he is, yeah. But he also is... He, he's still He funny. plays his kind of... He's still funny in, in the other Edgar Wright films, the other quality, Yeah, but he, st- he plays... In At World's End, he plays... A, a role that is trying to he be is funny. the he's supposed to be the yes. funniest character yes. and he is like i will say he's clearly a funny character but yes i think they're not using people to their talents as well as they could in that because nick frost is funnier i think absolutely justified so position number three i'm excited can i guess again i'm enjoying that yes go i on. feel like you don't know what it is or you've literally just figured it, it out i just realized we're doing the ranking in this order i, I could do three yeah okay you're confident you've you've locked it in no and changing what, it to b- be before, right before before you <laughs> before we before we get on the podium just to say there's a, there's a there's a fair gap between four and then three two one are, are pretty close i think that's fair mm-hmm. um i am going to part mm-hmm. oh this is tough yeah I'm going to guess your top three. I'm going to go Hot Fuzz 3, Scott Pilgrim 2, Shaun of the Dead 1. Ooh, all right. So tell me what number three is. Scott Pilgrim. Okay, yeah. that was, yeah, that was the toss-up. T- tough, I mean, on a different day. The thing is, I'll say this with Shaun of the Dead and the Hot, Hot Fuzz are amongst the toughest films I ever ranked. Like, when someone asks me what's my favourite, it kind of depends you on... love those, don't you? Yeah, not, not mood-dependent, but maybe where I am in my... My my age dependent and like I'll how recently like, you've watched the movie. yeah because those two films are just incredibly tight they're like right the the writing mm-hmm. is so referent self referential and um, everything is so purposeful yes. that you can watch those they're up there with the most rewatchable films I've ever seen so what is the distance between third place Scott Pilgrim and the other two well I, I, I hope we get a chance to do them on the podcast so I won't give like yes. the scores I have in mind also my scores would be subject to change rewatching it for sure but just kind of ballpark like is Scott Pilgrim like right next to them or is there is it quite a confident gap so you? my gut reaction for Scott Pilgrim was 8.7 yes I would expect both Hot Fuzz and Shaun of the Dead to be you know potential nines yeah and one of the main things that i think that you have alluded to during the long form podcast which by the way if you're listening please check it out the main problem with scott pilgrim that we found was the last 20 minutes really were just very weak hot fuzz and Shaun of the dead they're just strong the whole way through yeah unbelievable and i always i'm not sure which is a better film and which is which is funnier. I, I'd say Hot Fuzz is funnier and Shaun of the Dead is maybe better. So you're ranking them. They're your ranking. Don't tell me number two because mm-hmm. I'll figure that out. We just go straight to number one. Who's the winner? Number one is... 
I've literally changed my mind as I said. Sean of the Dead. Sean of the Dead. Sean of the Dead. Okay. Why? I <laughs> mean, which, which of your kids do you like more? Um, so I think both of them are not just exceptional comedies, but exceptional films. Like, the way that they are crafted, for instance, in Shaun of the Dead, spoilers for both of these, but, you know, Shaun of the Dead, there is a sequence where he foreshadows the whole film mm -hmm. in a conversation between Ed and um, mm -hmm. Simon Pegg's character, Shaun, Ed and Shaun. Mm -hmm. And it's through kind of a, a metaphor of him talking about a drinking binge that they're going to go on. And that drinking binge goes basically scene by scene of all the, the, main, the main points in the yes. film. Um, that is one of a series of callbacks and references that are, it, that's entrenched in both films. Like both films, you can watch and watch and watch and you'll be like, I missed that. I didn't see that. You can watch the, the bonus features on them and, and find new stuff out about the characters. All characters are so incredibly well fleshed out and their extended stories of thought, thought beyond what has happened in, in the stuff that we see within the film. For instance, um, Dawn's character in Shaun of the Dead, she's the one who saves Dylan, Mora, Dylan Moran's um, character, her, her boyfriend. Yep. Um, he gets torn apart by mm -hmm. zombies. And she goes out, leaves the pub that they're at, hold up, trying to shoot them with half a leg and runs out and says, I'm coming for you, David. And then she starts, she just bashes her way through like the horde of zombies, yes. presumably to her death. But it turns out that she actually climbs up a tree and survives the whole, the whole scare. Oh, so okay. you don't know this until, unless you kind of read into it a bit. Yeah, okay. So she actually manages to avoid the seemingly... Um, fatal situation. Fatal, yeah. Hides in the tree with her leg, kind of as company. I can't remember if she ends up having to eat the leg or something like that. Jesus. But whatever happens, she, she survives the ordeal and then she stays in touch with with Sean through Christmas cards. Like, she's on Christmas cards. <laughs> right, <laughs> like That's right. their relationship. Kind yeah, of okay. So things like that are well thought out. So in Hot Fuzz, similarly, you've just got, like, I think... Edgar Wright and Simon Pegg, who both write these, on song. I th it, on the, song. On, so they're just absolutely on top form. Yeah. Those two films. The writing is unbelievable in it. And I think that there's really an element, like the, the, the things that you were referring to, where something feels so special about a film mm. where the writers and the directors do things that they know you probably aren't going to notice for the first five times that you watch it. Yeah. Like they do, and he does so much of it. Mm. It's, it's so, the, the attention to detail, particularly in terms of the narrative is just, it's so, it, it, he cares about it so much. And it's like, nobody is going to notice this shit when you first release it. Nobody. And yet the amount of, effort and work that he will have put in to make these things happen even though it does even yeah. though it it doesn't you could still do exceptionally well without mm. doing any of that if you get the rest of the stuff right and then he goes those extra the extra mile and then some mm. to do basically easter eggs oh yeah the easter eggs so I'll give you examples of how it works in Shaun of the Dead versus Hot Fuzz Sean Dead more motifs, so they'll have callbacks to previous gags, which you didn't realise were setups. So, for instance, when Sean and Ed are hanging out, and the, uh, Ed's playing a video game, and, and Sean's going like, oh, top left, oh, reload, blah, blah. Okay. They completely repeat that sequence for when they're in the bar, but Ed's the one saying it, Sean's shooting, and they say the exact same, top left. same yeah. lines, right? And similarly, at one point, Pete, who is played by Peter Serafinovich, he comes in, and... Uh, Simon Pegg's character, Sean goes, I said, leave him alone, which is a callback after Pete's biting into Ed's shoulder at this point. Yes. Callback to when he tells him, tells him to leave him alone when he's not a zombie. So they'll have little gags like that that are repeated. Yes. Whereas in Hot Fuzz, they do that as well, but the setup is, is actually kind of mirrored. So all the things that happen, every single line yes. is important like almost across the board every single line in the first half of Hot Fuzz leads to something to like... to a different variation of that later on right okay. now that as a 
in, in terms of how impressive that is, that's probably more impressive than how they do it in Shaun of the Dead. Like, it's much more considered. However, the reason why Shaun of the Dead slightly is elevated for me is because, as a full product, uh, and when I say full product, I mean the story itself, how it's how it um, completes. Yes. It's a bit more satisfying. Then, then Hot Fuzz kind of goes similarly to... Um, Scott Pilgrim, it kind of goes on a tiny bit. Okay. Goes into the fight in the model village, and you're like, the action set piece itself is maybe a teensy bit too drawn out, just a sure. tiny bit. Whereas Shaun of the Dead is almost perfectly. It's like no loose fat at all. Like, like for me, the story is tighter, yes. whereas the dialogue is is tighter in Hot Fuzz, but and maybe less important. It's, that. More, it's more creative and challenging to, uh, to execute. And one extra point the emotional, the proper emotional beats in Shaun of the Dead. Yes. are really good. Like Which is hard to get right, good. I think. I think in a comedy, it can get... There are times when they uh, try to have that kind of sincere moment mm. and it really doesn't land for me. Like, it happens quite often. Yeah. And you are absolutely right. In, in Shaun of the Dead and in Hot Fuzz as well, it, it does genuinely resonate with you as the audience when they do do it. The, the scene where Shaun... Um, uh, Sean and uh, I can't remember his, his girlfriend's name in it, but where they leave Ed and Ed's basically sacrificed himself because he's been bit, he's not going to survive. Yes. They're going to go up uh, and they he dies and then he, Ed farts and he'd be like, I'm sorry, Sean. Yes. He's like, I'm sorry too, mate. No, I'm sorry, Sean. Yes. And it turns out it's a fart and that's yes. another callback. But the emotions of that genuinely is, I, I, I've always felt is top notch I yeah. think they deliver it, it so well and it. I actually really rate Simon Pegg's acting I think that he is a really great yes really is great and I underrated totally yeah. Um, so yeah I, the reason why I get Shaun of the Dead number one if, <laughs> on other days I prefer the dialogue and neck. Us, but yeah but yeah okay well listen if you guys have listened this far thank you so much uh, don't forget to like and subscribe let us know what you think in the comments below and we'll uh, see you on the next one nice one cheers guys